Hello everyone and welcome back to another Math Monday. I'm reviewing in my car and I'm going to try not to move my arms a lot because I'm wearing this coat and I know that it makes a lot of noise. Today I'm going to be reviewing Ada Lovelace, The Making of a Computer Scientist by Christopher Holling, Ursula Martin, and Adrian Rice. So I have heard of Ada Lovelace before. I know she had some pivotal discoveries or contributions, I guess, to the field of computer science, but I was not super familiar with her and I was looking for a good introduction and I saw this in my library and decided to give it a read. It isn't massive, it isn't a massive comprehensive biography of her work or her life, but it was enough to give me a little bit of an introduction, so I decided to check it out and give it a read. Ada Lovelace was a countess, she was a countess and the daughter of the romantic poet Lord Byron, who I have heard of before, who made a computer program for a theoretical machine that I believe it was Charles Babbage created. So she kind of is writing one of the first programs. But this book is a overview of her life, so it doesn't just focus on that one achievement that she has. It's an overview of her life and primarily her education with regard to mathematics, because that was a key part in her being able to build this program. So Ada Lovelace is living in a time when women and women's education and girls education isn't really highly prioritized. The girls are usually in a family are usually educated at home if they have access to education at all. They're not really able to go to school or university. So their quality of education really depends on whether or not they can afford a good tutor or whether or not their parents are going to prioritize it. Ada Lovelace is lucky enough to be able to study a wide range of topics, even though she is doing it at home. And she's very driven, she's very motivated, and she's very interested in what she's learning about. She winds up wanting to go farther in mathematics, and she continues to take a course, but like over letter, with one of the... Uh, I guess preeminent mathematicians de Morgan was his name of the day. So she had this individual named de Morgan who was teaching her via letter and she was able to extend her mathematical knowledge. This book's focus primarily is through the correspondence that her and her family left behind. So the authors are taking the letters that were from her time or written by her or about her or from people around her and reconstructing parts of her life. They start with her early education and how she was raised, her family, her parents, and how that was arranged. They talk about her education, how she was trained with different governesses and tutors and such, and the skills that she excelled at. They discuss her course and her communication with De Morgan, who, where she really learned some of the other principles. And one thing to know about Ada Lovelace, or this book's tended to point out, is that while she didn't necessarily make a discovery, she had a really good, almost gut intuition of how things will be used in the future. She kind of predicted some things that were later discovered to be true. So she almost had a really good gut instinct for mathematics and things that maybe were lacking in, but were assumed to be true at the time. So she was really good at seeing those patterns. And it's amazing how much she was able to accomplish just by doing self-study basically at home through letters from a tutor. After that mathematical education, or maybe concurrent with that, she was also writing with an inventor, is my understanding, of Charles Babbage, who wanted to make a like calculating machine. And she was able to write these little theoretical, um, what was it called? I forget what it was called, but she was able to write this little program which would explain how the machine was going to do all these calculations. And this is, my understanding is this is why she's considered one of the first computer programmers, computer scientists, because of this calculation. And this is something she was able to attain despite not having the formal mathematics training that other people did have. Um, it almost reminds me of a very similar story that I had heard, which was, I believe it was a tessellation problem that was not solved. And it wound up being solved by a housewife who had nothing more than a high school college or high school education, mathematics education, but who had a very strong personal interest in it. And the the unsolved tessellation problem was published in a magazine, if I remember the story correctly, and she was able to solve it just by having a knack and intuition. 
Something else I took away from this book is first of all an appreciation for how much open uh, studying is today or education is today. I'm a woman and I was able to go to college and study mathematics and there was no problem with that. No one was telling me I couldn't. I had a K through 12 education. I went on to get a four year degree and there wasn't really a lot of, there was no restrictions based on me being a woman getting those two pieces of education. My uh, high school education and then my college education. And to think that even 200 years ago, arguably a very, very bright mind was having to do like letter courses and teach yourself because the opportunities just weren't there. And it makes you realize, first of all, how far we've come, how great the opportunities are today, but also it makes you think of how much knowledge and how many talented individuals weren't given access to education because they didn't have that opportunity back in the day. Obviously, we don't know what Ada Lovelace could have accomplished had she gone to a university or had formal training, but I would hazard a guess that she she had quite a bit of talent and some of it possibly remained untapped due to just her inability to access the formal education. I thought this was a really great introduction. It is again an introduction just due to the size of it. So there's a lot of other good books out there on Ada Lovelace if you want to read more on her. But if you're just looking for an introduction like me or something to get your feet wet or learn a little bit about her, I would recommend this book. It was pretty easy, nice to read. It felt like the perfect length for what I was looking for and I got what I needed out of it. And I know that if I want to read more, there's plenty more to read. So that is my review of Ada Lovelace, The Making of a Computer Scientist. I would probably give this a three star review or three out of five stars. Please let me know if you've read this book, what you thought about it, or if you've read any other books by Ada Lovelace, what you would like, um, that you would like to recommend. Please let me know. I'd love to hear it. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.